tried to keep the smart storage system as simple as possible. Uh, just because, you know, that's, that's sort of what I've tried to do in this factory overall. So basically the idea is, at the end of the line, the leftover resources get mixed together. So this is the end of the line. Heavy mod frames. All of this stuff has gone to do what it needs to do. Um, the encased beams, the screws, we don't store those, however. Mod frames, steel pipes, you know, yada yada. They all get mixed onto just one belt. Concrete too, of course, gotta have it. And then this belt delivers to the smart storage. Uh, it just follows our main bus and does a huge big tour around. So it goes by computers and supercomputers and motors and our iron factory. It also joins with our Nobelisk and rifle cartridge factory and all delivers right into the storage room. This is that very same belt. It's just merged with a few others by this point. Uh, we upgraded it to a Mark V as well for, you know, maximum potential throughput. Just fills up the containers faster. So this is like the last merge on the storage belt. So we got everything on there, all of our building materials. And the way we keep it from backing up is we attach it to a sink. So these are all a large series of smart splitters with uh, one item type going in each direction and all items being allowed through the center. So this means 50% of each compatible item will go into storage and 50% will continue on to the sink, which is a bit of a bummer, I know. But it's honestly not that bad for most materials. I find the usage... Um, it's so far under the production value that you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, we just keep a nice fast belt right into the sink there. And that's how we keep it from backing up. So to go back on that whole 50% going to the sink, because that's what you're seeing here, right? It's just a straight 50%. That's how splitters work, even smart splitters. So what you're looking at here is our reducer. Basically, it's three splitters and three mergers stacked on top. So each splitter splits it three ways, so a third each way. And this happens three times. And two of those thirds are merged onto this top belt here. So basically, that takes, like, most of the throughput, or, or most of the input, I should say, to the top belt and you can plug this back in to the beginning of your storage system so when you do this you know 90 something percent of your 50 percent overflow goes back into the system this allows each item a much better chance of actually getting into storage versus going to the sink the problem is, though, you notice I had that unhooked because this destroys your throughput. Depending on how much traffic you've got going out to that sink, doing this will get your belt moving quite slow, which I found in the case of my concrete actually slowed how fast the concrete bin filled. So I've decided to just overproduce and make up the difference that way. But you can decide to do it this way, which is technically more resource efficient. Though you need a better storage system, a better storage plan, to make sure you always have the quantity of material you're looking for. Now, I've talked with a lot of people over time about this storage system compared to notes. And um, there's some cool things people have done. So one thing I've heard of a person doing is putting a reducer at um, each container. And so this allows most of the items to go into the container. Um, and only when the container's filled does the overflow go straight to the sink, uh, which is a really cool one. However, this requires you to build a reducer on each storage container. 
And I do believe also you have to do individual belts to each storage container, which gets to be a mighty task when you have this many storage containers storing this many different item types. So that's that's a bit, you know. Yeah. Um another design that I've heard of, and possibly the best design I've ever heard of, is to put the reducer at the end of each production line. So where we started here at the end of the production line, put the reducer there. And so most of the flow goes to storage and leave the, the overflow belt for the sink. Now the downside on this is you don't get the one global sink. Instead, you put a sink at the end of the line that each one of your end of the lines, however you do that. Here we do this in heavy mod frames, supercomputers, and motors. Those are our end of the lines here. So I know that that's a lot of words and ho hopefully that makes sense, but um, maybe I'll have to make a physical demonstration of these strategies at some point in the future, but ho hopefully you guys get what I mean. So, so you'd, you know, throw a reducer, you'd split three times, merge three times, the, uh, the merge belt would go to storage, and the split belt would go to a sink. And that way, you don't destroy your throughput. You get most of your materials to storage first until it fills, and then everything goes to the sink and it doesn't back up. 